RC, Red Carcass here again. We're starting Global War 36 to 45 by historical board gaming with a pile of house rules. Uh, we're going to be starting the January 42 turn, and Germany's currently sitting at 55. And Germany's builds are totally dependent on whether it gets any of this tech or not, specifically improved shipyards. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to buy two tech rolls, plus I get a free one, so we're going to try advanced subs, uh, wartime economy, and improved shipyards. Now, depending on what happens there, other things will happen. So as you can see, I've got all the money there. Um, I just allocated money to move forward everything that's on the build chart, naval-wise, and I'm going to do these three tech rolls. So I'm taking the four bucks and we're throwing them into the bank. Now let's see if we can't get some tech here. It totally makes a difference on what I build and I don't want to figure out all my builds and then have to figure them all out again so all right um, and your build units actually happens after tech rolls so let's see what happens on our tech um, improve shipyards please be a seven or higher nope okay my builds are gonna stay what they were then uh, wartime economy seven or higher yes we got that Germany gets bonus money now and advanced submarines also got that so we failed on the one i was kind of humming and hawing on but uh there we there we go and there we go all right so germany has wartime economy at the start of this turn and it has advanced submarines it's going to affect my builds so I'm going to stop the movie clip here, and we're going to start uh, figuring out what to do with uh, Germany's money. All right. Okay, we're back. I did the tech rules. Put the four bucks in the bank. Now we're showing our builds here. We're building six tanks. Uh, we're moving forward two battleships. Um, I have the other sculpts already on there. I'm swapping up the French one, and I'm swapping up the French cruiser. I'm going to move forward the one cruiser and the two battleships there. Build one jet, six tanks, and I already did those uh, three tech rolls, two of which were purchased. And before we get going, I'm just going to roll this. I, I know I can't place this guy until I place those guys. I'm supposed to roll for them then. But I'm going to roll for them now because I keep almost forgetting. I finally remembered when I saw him. So we're going to roll for that commander. We need a seven or higher. There we go. The commander gets to be marshaled onto the board along with the units. And he has to be placed in Berlin, I believe. I'll double check the rules on that. Um, yeah, so that's that's my builds. Now let's see what we're doing. We are for combat moves. We got a few here for Germany. Both of these strategic rockets are going to be striking at this major factory because it can it only has two damage and it can take up to 20. So let's try to bring it as close to 20 as possible. This one's already got four damage, so whatever the unit they build here is going to be four bucks plus whatever for one unit, right? So we'll have two D6 on that one. Um, over here, we got a walk-in from Stockholm. We're just walking into Nervik with this one Marine. Uh, over here, we got the two infantry that were there. They're just going to walk over here. And a medium bomber from Western Germany has moved two to get there. So we still got from an air base. So we still got four moves left. Not quite sure where we're going to put him. And then on this one here, we got one infant, uh, one Marine from here. Wandered over. And then we picked up another Marine and two infantry. And we're amphibious ass assaulting with a cruiser, a destroyer a destroyer for bombardment and we threw in a jet fighter there too because we want to get rid of this tank and these two dudes all right we want to solidify this and then we're not dealing with this distraction um also we have a convoy here uh, spin that around you guys can't really read that it's hard enough reading something without having it upside down um then we're gonna have some craziness over here uh, this giant stack that the Germans had here, it's all going to move forward except for one infantry. So we got a jet, a regular fighter, a tactical. I think that's uh, six tanks, three advanced mechs, and two regular mechs. Some of the stuff came from back here. 
So we're going to attack into that city uh, overland. And then we have an amphibious assault here. These guys got scooped up from Mercia Valencia over here in Spain. And they went one, two, three from a Navy base. And they're dropping an artillery and an infantry against this one militia. And there's going to be two cruiser bombardments to go with that. All right. So that is the combat moves for the German turn. <clears throat> And I'm just going to stop this first. I just wanted to confirm. Uh, I know in some of the other Axis and Allies games, there were certain order that combat occurs. In this game, it's the attacker's choice. You can do whatever you want. You can attack here first, there second, or you can reverse it. You can convoy first, you can convoy last. You can strategic bomb whenever you want. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to... Um, let's do this... Let's do this... Uh, Amphibious assault here because I just threw that in as an add on here at the last second. I have a feeling it may not work out in my favor. I'm going to move this. We'll throw this down here. Oh, look at that. It oh, mostly fit. There we go. Um, all right. So two bombardments at two. Nothing. And the artillery is not on the first wave because it's not infantry. So I only have one attack at one in mountains. Miss. Let's hope that militia misses. Otherwise, we're screwed. Um, one at two. Okay, the militia missed. Now the artillery is involved. So the artillery lost its chance for first strike because it's round two. So it's going to support the infantry though. So that I'm going to have two shots at three, drop down to one, and drop down to two because of their mountains. So two attacks at two for the Germans. Oh, look at that. We got a two. Okay. So let's see what the uh, militia gets back. Another one at two here. And that's a four. So that was a success. And this is worth nothing. So there you go. And I'm not sure if you folks know what this means. Um, because Axis attacked somebody, uh, this now goes British. And so does that. And so does this boat. Oh, you can't see it. Uh, da, da, da. So what that means is that uh, this destroyer here, all the units in the city and all this income goes to the British. I'm not going to bother... Um, giving them anything right now we're going to do that at the end here and i'm probably going to have to battle board this one here there's quite a quite a bunch of stuff i don't want to mess that up because we got mountains but we got a commander we got blah, blah, blah. yeah so let's move on to here we've got a convoy raid and there is an escort on the line it's a battleship just outside of gibraltar there so, there's my six. Right. So, we're going to make the black one the German. And it's plus one because it's close to sub. And see that battleship with the black markings there? The British one. That one is on escort duty. So, that's a plus one as well. So, black is, uh, black is German and red is British. All right, so the Germans have three plus one for four. And these guys have um, sorry, two plus one for three. So the difference is one. So the British lose a dollar. And if the Italians go convoy rating on there, the only, the only stipulation with this is the maximum amount you can take off in one turn. So that is one, one turn of the calendar here is the six from the British, the two from the French, and the one from the Italians. So I'm just going to put this money here with a British roundel that I took out of the British so that we know how much they've lost on this line. Because if the Italians hit it with these two subs and they get get eight off, they they can't take all eight. They can only take seven, right? So we're just going to do, I'm just going to do that so uh, things are a little more clear so yeah that dollar came off of the British's 18 
they now have uh, our seven, no, 15. Yeah, they had 18, now they're at 17. Oh, sometimes you get confused with your color coding there. Um, I don't know why. And then we got this. We got one, two strategic rockets shooting at this factory. You can take a max damage of 20. It already has two. So they are 1d6 each since we got them right here. Six, seven, eight. All right, so we got eight damage, but we already have two. So just to make life way simpler, I'm just going to take a pink one, which I use for tens. I'll put it underneath. There we go. So there's 10 damage on that. So in order to build one unit, they got to repair six damage to bring it down to four. All right, simple enough, but... Everybody uses different stuff on their table. That's why I'm kind of spilling stuff out here. All right. Now let's do some of these here. This one's a no contest. So that's a buck. I'm not going to I'm not gonna flip these. I'm going to flip them all at the same time at the end here. And we'll uh, add up the money. So that one's no contest. This one is worth something, I think. Oh, it's underneath the German dude. This one's worth one as well. And it's worth a bonus to the Germans. So this coastal gun only shoots at naval amphibious assaulting ships. That is not happening here, so that's not in the fight. Although it won't be destroyed if the Germans get wiped out. So we've got two infantry attacking at one into mountains. we got one defending at four, one defending at two. And then this came from this medium bomber normally attacks at seven, but it came from a commander's location, so he's gonna attack at eight. All right, so let's just spell that out one bomber at eight, that's a hit, two infantry at one, nothing, one infantry at four in defense, that's a hit, so that's one each. And one militia, please don't hit at two. Okay, good. So that's one each. And obviously we're not gonna lose the bomber, so we'll take that guy. And these would be British now as well, but we're gonna take that guy off. I'm not gonna switch them out unless this fails, this attack. So we're gonna do it again, one at eight, one at one, with one defender at four. So one at eight, one at one, and one at four. There, the attack is over. Because I'm not risking a bomber trying to shoot this dude down. So that was a failed attack. This is gonna stay British. All right. Um, like I said, I'm gonna battle board that one in, uh, in uh, Istanbul there, and we'll uh, see what's going on. So this is. One at two, one at one for amphibious assault. And then we got th four attacks at two and one jet at eight, but he came from a commander, so he's at nine. So, where was I here? I need one more guy. So they've got four. Oh. First strike bombardment, one at two, and one at one. Both failed. Okay, well now we got four at two for the attacking infantry. Got one hit. And the jet at nine with the commander bonus is a 12, so it missed. So we got one hit on the British. I presume they're going to lose one of their infantry. Uh, but they still have two infantry at four and one tank at five. So two at four. That's one hit for the, let's just leave that one up there. One hit for the British. And uh, one at five. Okay, that's obviously a hanger. Let's do that again. Okay, one at five. So they only got one hit back. And we will lose the one Marine. And now, there's no double casualties because the first round is over. So we're just going to go on to regular rolling here. 
Okay. So we've got three at two attacking. That's one hit. Now maybe this jet can hit on a nine. It's insane that it missed. There we go. Two hits. That's all we needed. Now we got one infantry at four back. That's a miss. And one tank at five back. That's also a miss. All right. So we were successful here. Let's take those guys off. Move this British symbol over to there. There we go. And I guess I don't need another German one over there. Okay. So British, German, German. So the British went down one, went up one, and then the Germans went up one from neutral. Easy enough to understand. I hope. Okay, so what else are we going to do? We only have that fight over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video here, move that stuff to the battle board because it's going to be a little bit complicated. Okay, that wasn't as complicated really as it looked. However, there are some modifiers. So we're mountains, so the commander bumps everybody up one. So let's just do that for the planes. One, one, one. But we're in mountains, so all the land zone units drop down again. So one up, one down, stays the same. These guys are mountains, but it doesn't matter because they're not mountain infantry, and the fighter has no commander, so that's all we sit. <clears throat> For some reason, I thought there were more units here, but there are not. Anyway, um, let's, let's start rolling this. Um, we have an air superiority round between the jet and this fighter. So whatever they hit against that fighter there. So whatever the fighters hit is uh, killed automatically. So Or is going to shoot a plane. Right? Unless there's no planes, then they first round. Kind of like um, Amphibious Assault. So I'm going to give a, an orange for the jet at 9. Or, and we're going to do a 7 for the fighter, or blue for the fighter at uh, 7. Okay, that's one hit. Which means I'm just going to take that off immediately. That's a fighter. All right. Not that it really matters, but it's going to matter when these, when the, uh, when the Turkish shoot back at us, right? So, all right, uh, one tactical at eight. That's a hit. Um, oh, good. Five tanks. So, five tanks at six. And one, two, three, four more hits. And I only needed three more hits, so... That's it. We're done. So, four infantry and a fighter. And <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing for them. The fighter is going to be blue. Everybody else, the infantry will be black. Yeah, let's see. We'll make them red or orange, sorry. So, fighter at six and one at six and four at four. So that's a hit. That's an aircraft that the Germans have to lose. And two at four. So that's two regular units they're going to lose. Now, Germany is probably... I know that sounds crazy, but Germany's going to lose these two regular mechs. Because these guys are going to depend with a bonus. Oh, there's a city bonus. Okay, good. I still have those guys out. Uh, city bonus for the infantry gives them a plus one. So it's actually... Right? Four, five, and they get a target select on armor at one, but nobody rolled a one. That's a good thing I haven't mentioned that. So that's actually three losses. Um, maybe we won't do that. We'll just take that off instead. It's way less complicated. All right. So, and we need to lose a fighter or an, an aircraft of some form. Now, for Germany, this jet's pretty 12 bucks. This is 11. That's 10. So. I'm going to pick a loss based purely on money. All right. So that's that. Now I'm going to fly around here and see what all happened. So this one went German. So that's a dollar from the British. 
but the British went up this buck here. So we're going to leave the British alone. They don't change from that. This one here, Narvik, went German. That's up another dollar. So Germany's up two. British is up one and down one. So British is level. So that's two. Okay. Um, where else did I have an attack? So Germany's up two, and then this one here in Istanbul is worth two more. So that's Germany up four. And this one's for the British up one. All right. So, and this one's worth nothing. So Germany's gone up two, three, four. And the British have gone down one, but they've gone up one, two. So it balances out one up for the British and four up for the Germans. That is it for my attacks. I'm going to show those income changes. So Germany, one, two, three, four, from 55 to 59. They also have wartime economy roll this turn. And the British go down a buck and up two. So just up one. All right. Um, nobody else's income was affected by these that I know of. All right, I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to do some non-combat movements of the units that haven't already moved. I'm going to place these guys back on the map here. You, that's boring stuff. You don't need to see that. And then um, I will show you what I'll do. And yes, this commander, I already rolled for him. And he will marshal on with these guys. Technically, I roll for him when I place them. But I always forget to do that. So there we go. And we will leave you there. Okay, we're going to do this German move forward and replacement. So this French captured cruisers being paid forward one. This French captured battleships being paid forward one. Along with the German battleships being paid forward one. All right, so that's these are off the map now. Um, another thing, which is cool because I'm starting to run out of chips. I don't know if you can tell, but my German chips are getting pretty light compared to, say, my my uh, my Japanese. I got three versions of the game going on here. Uh, I think uh, the original Europe Classic and um, Europe Second Edition, and all of the roundels are pretty much in use for the most part. So, oops. Um, yeah. That's uh, 60 rounds, I think. Or maybe it's 50. I'm not sure. Um, let's see what else happens. So those are the place units. I'm also placing a tank up here. Placing a jet and two tanks here. I forgot to pay that $1 off the factory, so I can only build four there, but it is okay. I built two more tanks there, so that's five tanks. And the fifth tank I built over there. And that's it. I just built six tanks, a uh, jet, and moved those ships forward. Um... Narvik here is a German bonus buck for having possession of Narvik. Sweden is a plus three for Germany if it's Axis controlled or neutral. Um, or sorry, Axis aligned or neutral. Um, so I went up actually four dollars in, uh, in, uh, in uh, bonus income. So with the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact, six bucks for Sweden and Romania, a buck for buck for the Spanish Civil War, a buck for Narvik, and then another two bucks for um, Iraq. I think I said uh, the only bonuses Germany doesn't have is Transcaucasia plus two and Southern Iraq, or sorry, Southern Iran plus two. But I mean. The fact that Germany's not fighting Russia means that it can get this army involved, maybe down in the Med, right? But maybe Russia sees that and waits for it to go somewhere else. We'll see. Um, so, yeah, that's basically the gist of it. I'm kind of moving troops just to the borders there. Um, there's nothing I can do up here. I'm really getting pretty thin in the middle here, so I think we might have to spend a turn filling in the holes again for Germany next turn. Uh, maybe they can get that Navy built, but uh, right now Germany's got 59 plus another 15. That is 74, I believe. 59, 69, add another 5, yeah, 74. And guess what Germany got this turn? 
wartime economy. Roll 2d6 and add it up. An extra five bucks. So Germany gets a free five bucks. So they were at uh, 74. Now they're at $79. That's quite impressive when you compare it to the British who have 17. So Russia's getting close, but um, I don't think Russia really wants to start tangling with that monster regularly here. All right. Um, yeah. I don't have anybody to discuss with me, but uh, as it sits right now, I didn't feel like attacking Russia. And if I was Russia, I don't think I would go this turn. There's a couple more loose points I want to pick up, right? That's why we got these two guys down here. That's a free victory point. You know what I mean? If they're still alive and I, or I still own this at the very last turn of the game, which is where things get sporting, but um, there's still that uh, place down there that's worth a buck. This touch stuff the Russians could attack, that's worth bucks. Um, or it could go here. If Japan goes at first command, maybe uh, Russia goes at that too. Or, you know, who knows? Or somebody gets involved over there. We'll find out. I'm going to stop this video here. I'm doing too much chatting about Russia. It's the German turn. Anyway, so yeah, the Germans have collected uh, $79 in bonuses, wartime income, and territory income. And they placed their stuff. And, uh, they're starting to get a pretty good stranglehold on uh, on Britain, considering that these guys have got to repair six damage to build one unit, or they've got to repair four damage, then buy a unit. So, yeah, if they want to build two units here, that's going to cost them uh, ten bucks, and then they can build two units, whatever they cost. That's starting to get expensive here, so... The British might have to start using this factory here. I forgot all about this one. It's a major over here that can make five units. It's got no damage. And I'm um, doing a transport shock to their own home country. We'll see. Um, yeah, it's starting to look ugly. And I will leave you there. And we'll okay, the January 42, Russian turn. They're going to buy four of these and get the fifth one free. From the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact. Oh, and they're going to buy two Marines and a transport, five mechs, and they're going to save a buck. They're going to start an air base that's two turns at five and spend three bucks to move the Navy base to stage two. And Vichy money, forgot about that. So the Germans actually have 81. Um, yeah, so. That's the build, and we'll see what we get done with that. Um, the CCP are going to build their one dude, or two infantry, because they have six bucks. And they got to roll for this commander again. They need a seven or higher to get a commander. Uh, the CCP has no combat moves, because they can't reach. So they're just going to non-combat into there. And we'll do that commander recruitment roll. Now, oh, here, where's the die? Fail. Okay. You need a seven or higher, so they fail to get that commander back. And these guys are going to go right here. That's it. That's the CCP's turn. So they're done. They collect a bonus from touching USSR aligned and USSR aligned. So two bucks into the bank for them. And they spent six. You know what? Maybe Russia will just lend least them this money. They couldn't figure out what to do with that one dollar change. All right. Um, Russia doesn't really have a combat move in range right now, so I'm just going to do some non-combats with Russia. These two dudes are going to scoop up, and they're going to go one, two, three. They're not at war with anybody down there. If somebody wants to initiate war with Russia, I invite it. I don't think anybody does, but you never know. <clears throat> um, we're going to take one infantry and a cavalry. And they're going to go 
two moves down to there. <clears throat> At the Portuguese location over there. It's a victory point way over there, but they're in range. They move one and they drop. If only this base was set up. But uh, there we go. The base will not be completed this turn, but it will be completed the turn after. If I continue spinning. So I'm just going to place this over here. Actually, no, let's... Uh, what other non-combat moves do we want to do? Maybe we want to move this tank down there. These two dudes over to here. These two light tanks over to there. I will move those two dudes into there too. Let's make this a little bit threatening so nobody really wants to... We want to be prepared in case the Germans do something silly. Um... One, two, three, four, yeah. Now oh, we can go five even. We're gonna have an air base down there pretty soon, so that should be fine. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else to do, really. We're gonna rail move these two Marines all the way over to here. Um, so that's our rail moves inside of Russia. And we're going to non-combat move that one dude down there. Um, oops. Let's send this fighter down to... It's there. They're not on an air base, but uh, that, that's pretty much the most central place that can reach any of these cities. Or down there, so if need be. Um, we're going to non-combat move these dudes out of here. All right, so one, two, three. There you go. Um, yeah. And um, actually, we're going to change one of these mechs. So we're going to save four bucks. And what we're going to do with those save four bucks is we're going to actually save a dollar. And I don't know. One mech off, right? So that's four bucks. Give me a second here. Doing some brief math. I need to look in my chart for Russia on their build chart. We're not going to lend lease at the CCP because I have a better per plan for that. So we're going to take off a 10. Right. Um, we're going to build two of these for eight. And I'm going to use six and three for nine. Right. And then this. And then the dollar change from that will be leaving me with three mechs. And I've never built one of these for Russia, and I feel that now might be the time. Oh, what are we doing? I've got nine dollars, right? So I don't want to rely on a shipyard. I think I painted up three of these guys. Oh, look at that. I even painted up four, or five. For some reason, I painted up five of these. So three dollar light carriers for the Russians, yeah, and then three mechs instead. I know that's crazy, right? But why not? Russia's never had any of these on the map that I've ever seen, and uh, be kind of fun to have them on there. Uh, paint chipped off. That's uh, white underneath. All right. Um. Yeah. So that's that's Russia's build. Um. I don't have anything else I'm doing with. Uh, with non-combats, really, I don't really have a reason to do anything, so I'm going to... Let's go on the build chart. These three mechs, let's place them right... Let's place them right over here. That way, if Japan gets crazy, we're okay. These two Marines, we're going to place over here. And... Transport, we're going to place over there to scoop those two Marines up next turn. The airbase goes over here, and 
here. Let's monitor this over. We're going to place these three light carriers. Man, it's getting busy over here. Everybody's building stuff. And this one is going to move over to here. But instead of leaving it on here, I'm actually going to put it on that under construction because it's only one turn away from completion. I've been doing that with these under construction tabs. And technically, we're going to do the same thing just to clear up that marshaling card with the uh, the Netherlands because that one is only one 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 spending turn away from being completed. All right. Um, so, yeah, that's where we sit for Russia right now. That little group of dudes is going down to here. They couldn't swing around and go hit the Belgian Congo, too. That's another neutral. It's another two bucks. Oh, that's another buck. So that bring Russia up, too. Um, yeah, other than that, I think they're stuck dealing with this stuff. Or... This stuff, and I can't do this stuff according to this new ridiculous rule until the U.S. is at war and Berlin falls. I just took the Berlin off my rules. I didn't change anything else this time. Um, yeah, so Russia's got quite a bit of stack built up here, but that is strictly because of the German stack here and the German stuff all down. Like the Germans are pretty heavy in here, so Russia's going to be heavy as well. Then Russia doesn't want to get uh, annihilated, right? If Germany does take something in here, either that one or this one, there's enough other stuff that can come in and collapse on it. Um, yeah. That's uh, that's the plan. Now, I took the fleet card off because it's no longer in the same zone as the British fleet, so it doesn't really need that card. There's not as much stuff there as it looks, or as it looked with that fleet card. I prefer not to have them on those fleet cards, but uh, sometimes it's required. Then a guy forgets how many's on there, and I think it's bigger than it is. All right, so there's a there's a build chart. We've got three Russian uh, light carriers. Man, there's a lot of light carriers on here. Maybe somebody's gonna have to start <laughs> moving some of these forward. Uh, the British were, and then they started falling apart here. All right, so that's the oh, Russian turn, except for one thing. I didn't do any of these uh, tech rolls. So we got five tech rolls for Russia. We got five on the go anyway, so we're just gonna roll those same five. And I'm gonna go from the bottom. Tech number 13, improved shipyards, seven or higher. Okay. Uh, wartime economy, number 11, seven or higher. Okay. Um, what's the other one we were working on here? Heavy armor, uh, an 11. I needed an eight, so heavy armor is a go. Um, advanced mechs at seven. Uh, that's a go. And since it's the same price, and technically this should have been done before, I'm going to upgrade those three mechs for the same cost because they were available this turn to advanced mechs. It's the same cost, it's just plus one attack and defense. And then we're going to do advanced artillery. Here. Let's see if we can't. No. You've been rolling advanced artillery since the start of the game. I'm going to get those stupid Katyushkas. Weak fail. So, in order of appearance, fail, fail, success, success, fail. So, oh, we're all stuck together here. There we go. And that's how the tech tree looks. So, Russia's got two more done, advanced mechs. I just, uh, since technically this is done before you do your builds and it's the same price, of course I would build advanced mechs instead of regular mechs. Same money, plus one attack defense. So yeah, I just threw a yellow chip on that stack there. If you're wondering why I'm using yellow, I don't know if you can see this very clearly, but uh, if you take a look on here. You know, it says advanced artillery, advanced subs, advanced mechs. Um, over here, it's got jet aircraft, and all of them kind of got like a yellow highlighter mark on them. That's really the only reason I picked yellow. So, all right, so that's the Russian turn. Not too much happened, but enough. And yeah, I keep forgetting to put these. Uh, these are the six available kamikazes. I'm using these same, uh, these same little tokens or chips or whatever. All right, so that is the Russian turn. Russia, oh. Russia gets a D12 roll, 
because the Axis took possession of something next door to Russian original home territory, which would be here. So that's a D12 roll, and Russia does a D12 roll of its own to increase its income. And let me just double check what its income is supposed to be. 46. So we're pretty much here. Well, I'm not going to say we're guaranteed because we're only at 41. We could roll two ones. So we're going to roll 2D6 or 2D12. And uh, whatever that comes up to is what the Russian income is, stopping at 46. Uh, there. We only need a five, so we're good. So Russia's going one, two, three, four, five. Russia is now at full income. So I no longer need this dot over here, here. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So Russia's new income is 55. Just a couple below, uh, because they're at full income plus their conquered territories. Now, Russia looks a little more, more familiar. And this isn't as big of a jump as you think, right? I mean, these guys are getting almost 20, 15 bucks in bonuses plus the wartime economy. But it's not that much if you consider that Russia's not acquiring anybody else and has lost no units. Um, all right, so Russia collects 55 plus three bucks from the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact. So 30, 40. Fifty, five, and then three bucks from the back. <clears throat> Sorry. So Russia's actually got uh, 58 in the bank. And the KMT already collected their two. Or sorry, the CCP already collected their two. So we're just going to leave it there. I noticed my turns are getting a little bit longer because I've got a lot more moving of stuff to do here. So I might do this in a three-part video again. I don't want to have my videos over an hour long. And I don't want to do two parts that are like 45 or two hours. I might do three parts that are like closer to you know, half an hour, something like that. Anyway, next up is Japan with its... Um, 30 bucks in the bank. Let's see what they buy. RC here for January 1942, Japanese turn. Um, I've shown my combat moves and I'm showing my purchases here. So uh, two elite marines uh, finishing off that minor factory in Siam. Uh, four irregular infantry, one tech roll, and saving a dollar. So let's do the tech roll right now. The only tech that Japan is working on right now that doesn't have completed is... Four time economy. Uh, six. That's a fail. All right. Now, so our combat moves here. Yep, Japan's got a whole bunch of them. So Japan is going to be attacking the three light tanks from here into there. Uh, we're going to bring in a, a fighter from the fleet. Which has gone one, two, and it'll be able to go three, four, five, because I have long range aircraft. Same deal going on here. Two infantry from here went in, and the fighter and tactical are along there against these two militia. And then this one here, everybody that was left over from these two has gone into here, and they brought the four aircraft that were here, so they've flown one, two, three. And they hell, still have two moves left to get them home somewhere. So we'll probably drop them off down there or something. We'll figure it out. All right. Actually, yeah, somewhere down there. And then all this stuff is everybody being doing an attack. I actually brought five infantry and two, uh, two elite marines here amphibiously from here and here. And the only reason I didn't bring six infantry is because I took the armored train down there. Well, why not? So, there we go. We will be, if we're successful, we will have the KMT down to this location and that location. And then the CCP will be down to this one location. All right, and that is the plan. I do more about these light tanks when you can't blitz, and you can't blitz in mountains anyway, so... Let's do some rolling here. Um, we're going to start with the one right closest to us. Why not? Um, 
So we got two tacticals, two fighters. So two at seven. That's one targeted hit. And two at six. And that's the second hit. I don't think I need to use target select though. Uh, let's do three tanks. Nope, nope, we're out, so we need threes. Let's do two more tanks. Nope, and let's do one infantry at one. All right, so they still got uh, one guy left. I did have one targeted hit from the tactical, so you know for sure we're going to take the mountain dude out because he defends better. And we're going to take this chip out. Sad that I only got two hits out of that. Now let's see what they shoot me back with. Um, we got one mountain at five and two at four. So just to make it easy, purple is mountain. I don't know if you can really tell. There. Blue is mountain. So blue is five and this one's four. So two hits. All right. So that will be one light tank and an infantry. And let's try that again. We've got four light tanks, two tacticals, and two fighters. So two tacticals at seven. One hit. That's all we needed. Um, one dude at uh, four back. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. It's neat. So the CCP has been eliminated in this zone. It's worth nothing. Japan's going to take it over. Just going to leave that there so I remember to fly these planes somewhere else. Uh, that's part of why I do that. I know some people put it on the back side of roundels, but uh, I find it's uh, easier that way. If you don't use the roundel, you can still uh, figure things out. Um, so you know where to fly your plane. All right. Um, next one here. We got one fighter and three light tanks. And it is in mountains again, so I'm going to make the fighter blue and three light tanks. So the fighter at six and three light tanks at three because they are attacking into mountains. Uh, missed with the light tank, but I don't know. The fighter missed and the light tank missed. So we're going to do one militia back at two. And do it again. Fighter got a hit. That's all we needed. Oh no. Yeah, there's just one. Fighter got a hit, and Alicia failed on the second round. All right, so that one is also toast. All right, so that's the second one. That one's also worth nothing. Um, the only one that's worth anything is down there, by the way. So the next one here, we got a tactical, a fighter, two infantry against two militia. All right. Uh, tactical at seven, hit. Fighter at three, six, miss. Two infantry at one, because they're in mountains, misses. And two militia at two. Oh, look at that, one hit. So one for one. Okay, so we lose um, an infantry for the Japanese, and we're going to lose a militia for the uh, KMT. Leaving us with one infantry fighter and a tactical, and the enemy with one uh, militia. So, tactical, seven. Nope. Uh, fighter at six. Okay, that's the hit. And uh, militia back. Damn it, one. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, we've eliminated everybody, and we are not going to lose the plane. We're going to lose a dude. That place is worth nothing anyway. So we'll eliminate their forces. And then these guys will have to fly home. These guys are going back on the carriers anyway. So. <clears throat> mm -hmm. so that's that one. Um, this one's going to be really easy. We've got th four, three battleships and three carriers. So let's do... Three battleships at four. One hit. That's all I needed. We're done. I know. Overkill. There's a reason for the overkill, though. This one is worth 
two. So we're gonna have to go up two and the KMT down two. And uh, yeah, let me get that out of here. So I failed to take that place. I was successful in taking this one, but it's worth nothing. And we were successful in taking this one, but it's worth nothing. All right, now I got some non-combat moves, and literally every move, move unit I have moved on combat move, unless it's in the ocean. I'm just leaving it sit. So non-combat move. I'm moving these. Uh, I'm moving these um, destroyers over to here. The fleet. That didn't bombard also moved forward because it was going to be their non-combat move anyway. So, here, let's get rid of that extra dude on the ground there. There we go. I need to do it on the train. It's just one extra thing to get confusing. All right. Um, so these carrier craft have flown three from the city. One, two, three. We're now going to fly four, five back. Closest we could get. We can't land there because we didn't own that at the start of our turn. And these have moved two, and they're going to move two back to the fleet. So that is that. We are now going to place two of these guys up here, and we're going to place the other four guys here. Doesn't really matter. They can build five and five. They're in the same C zone, so the pickup's the same. Um, oh, yeah. And we're going to take this under construction tab off because we paid off the second half of that. Cannot build there this turn, though, because we just finished up doing the upgrade. So there we go. Um, yeah, I don't really have much else. All right, so that is the Japanese turn. Um, the KMT went down. Or the CCP went down nothing, but the KMT went down two. Japan went up two, sorry. So Japan goes up two to 32, and the KMT goes down two to one. All right, that's about as far as we can get with this turn. And I think I'm going to shut her down now, and it will be now the Netherlands and British turn next.